So yes. should we just launch into it, ladies? I'll introduce everyone and then let you just say a bit about yourself and we'll launch into whatever we want to talk about. We're feisty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spicy. Yes, yes. So we've, we've already started. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. We're all over the globe. I am really looking forward to this conversation with this amazing group of ladies. So we have got Bryce from Esoteric Atlanta. We've got Cindy from Sacred Garden and we have got the lovely Chantelle, who I'm so honoured to be speaking to for the first time today, from Aquarius Rising Africa. So how are you all doing, ladies? Really, really good. Yeah, on the opposite side of the globe from where you all are. It's really good, yeah. Having a great time. Times are crazy. Energies are wild. <laughs> But we 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 doing it. What can I say? <laughs> so good to actually meet, to meet you all, and you know, just with this wonderful Zoom connections we have, and meeting our tribe from across the globe, it's wonderful. So a real honour to be here. Thank you so much. It's so great to meet Cindy. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, but I do agree that the the energies are definitely there. They're becoming more and more potent. I actually just made a video with another friend of mine talking about receiving all these like these activations, these downloads that are pe that people are receiving that are just much more available to folks than they were before. And while you receive them, though, it can feel a little wackadoo. If you you don't really know what's happening, but it can feel a little a little crazy. It's like this new earth. These new they're new earth activations and downloads that are happening and, and taking us on like but it's taking us on on that path back to ourselves and like you were talking about Bryce for you know just awakening awakening how it's time for us to show up on this like this new earth timeline but yeah I mean I feel there's so many people that I've been talking to that really feel that right now yeah for sure and that's what we kind of talked about last week was this idea of discernment as well and I think you're right I think um the four of us here before this started all worked on ourselves. And I'm grateful for that because I feel like I personally did a lot of work through yoga, not knowing that this great awakening was coming, but just working through my own trauma, working through my own thought process, realizing that my own thoughts, um, it's interesting on my channel where we're reading through the yoga sutras again, I was telling Cindy on Sunday and you know, I know Shanti and we, we read the yoga sutras all the time, but um, I'm actually now reading Sri, uh, Sri Swami Satyajananda's commentary on it, which I haven't done in a while. And going back and rereading the commentary, because yoga is all about your own mind and how your mind is such a, can be your greatest enemy, but can also, if you learn how to use the mind as a tool, it can be your greatest ally to help you grow. And like Sri Swami Satchitananda has an example of like the way we perceive something. For example, he, you know, and I love the way the Indians say things because it's so simple. You know, they're just very simple in the way they say stuff. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, us Westerners, we try to make things complicated sometimes. Um, you know, if you're a little boy and someone knocks at the door and you run and it's a man standing there and you've never known this man, you don't know who he is, he's a stranger to you. So you call for your mom, your mom comes out and it's her long lost husband, your father. All of a sudden now your perception changes of the man. He's now daddy. The man didn't change. Your perception of the man changed. And I think what's happening now, because I know uh, Catherine and I were talking about how we're feeling a little bit wobbly. And I know I've gotten an I got an interesting comment this morning asking me um, to be accountable for, for Dallas on the second, which I didn't go to Dallas. I wasn't in Dallas. You know, there was supposed to be something that happened. Well, we've heard this a lot. And my whole thing is I take everything with a grain of salt anyway. Because my faith isn't in human beings. My faith is in the universe and God. The, and, the, and the fact that we're moving into an age of Aquarius, that's astrological, it's prophesized. And so I think what's, what's concerning and what's really interesting, I'm so glad we're talking about this, is if you are waking up, if you are on the process of like realizing that the matrix is an illusion and is crumbling, you can't then continue to rely on somebody else to be your leader. You have to be your own leader. You can't, yes, we are e extremely grateful to the good, the good guys, we'll say, to what they've done. We're I, I was telling Catherine, if I ever got a chance to meet them, I would 
probably cry and hug them for taking on that responsibility, especially having to do, I think we have to say the young people now, I don't see, think the CH word has allowed the young people, the small, tiny humans, what they've taken on. That's amazing. And I am so grateful that they were strong enough to do that. But at the end of the day, in your own personal life, you have to take responsibility. I take everything with a grain of salt, even my own shows, even the stuff I research, I take with a grain of salt. And I say that sometimes, like, I don't know, this is just what's available to us. This could be wrong, but this is what I found. And as truthers, truthers, our content creators, whatever, we're just trying to share with everybody what we found so we can grow together. But at the end of the day, you can't blame anybody for it because something didn't happen. I know Janine says that, like, if you want something to happen, then make something happen. Find something to celebrate each day. Find something about your life. I was thinking about this the other day, like, even though we're not at the end of the, the destination yet, we're still on the journey. I, you know, as an American, I'm sure that this is true all over the Western world. We have these social security numbers. This is our identity. You know, if somebody steals your credit, oh, well, too bad. We have to make all this money. We have to pay these bills. We have to get this education. And that little paper you get at your birth has your name in big, bold letters, meaning that you're now owned by this franchise. And it causes so much depression and anxiety in people. But one of the most freeing things for me through this process is watching that dissolve, that that all of a sudden has no power over me anymore. That piece of paper, that number, that has no, that's not me. That's not who I am. And in my own life, that is something I'm so grateful for every day that even through the practice of yoga, that was still something that was really indoctrinated in me to be, to do this, to get this education, to get this job, to have this much money, to have this car. And the fact that we're watching, we're, we're the lucky ones that were able to be awake for this, to watch this system dissolve. And, and, and how freeing is that? So instead of really being mad because something didn't happen on a particular date, just sit back and settle into it for a minute. You know, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I started off before um, Chantel and Cindy joined Vice and I. I was just sort of saying, you know, I was a little bit wobbly today and I was thinking, why was that? And I think probably what you were saying, Cindy, is possibly some ascension sin um, symptoms. I haven't been feeling great the last 24 hours. Not ill, but I can't really explain it. I feel weird, a bit nauseous, a bit off colour, a bit... bit, bit um, floaty is the only way I can sort of describe it sort of not quite in my body properly um which is really interesting my animals are still reacting fine to me they're not noticing anything too weird yet so that's always an encouraging sign but also I've had so many conversations over the last 24 hours with other people a bit like you were experiencing Bryce where you've had a comment saying you know, you're responsible for what did or didn't happen in Dallas. And, and we're seeing this over and over again, this projection of people saying, well, you said this was going to happen on this date and not even at me, at other people. And I'm just thinking, God, have we learned nothing over this last year? Really, are we still having those conversations where we're saying it's your fault because you told me this and it didn't happen? Where's the ownership? Where's the I'm going to get off my backside and change my own life. And I think I was just a little bit shocked, disappointed, the whole ways of a moment. And I'm thinking, my goodness, are we still at this point as a, a you know, of a general level of awareness where all people are looking to do is project the blame on someone else. And have someone do it for them, fix their well, life think for them. I think that's I think part of the, the, our each per, of our personal awakenings and part of our like ascension is uh, is that yeah no one is really responsible for for saving us and it's so much easier to take that to take that mentality to wait for something outside of us to happen for us to finally feel like we're okay. Um, Last time, I think we were talking about how when you hit on someone's foundational root, their muldahar or their root chakra, their sense of safety, you know, how that immediately takes them into the, the realm of fear. And when you get into the realm of fear, you lose that discernment. And it is so much easier when you're in that, in that space to want someone to be your knight in shining armor <laughs> to pull you out of that 
and to save you from the world and because it's a very unsettling feeling and if we haven't quite anchored the um like anchored into our own power then that's you know I, i you know i think that's a human nature thing too we tend to want to to reach outside of ourselves to find that that night to to save us when in fact just the awakening process in general, whether you're on this new earth timeline or whether it was two or 3,000 or 4,000 years ago, the, the, the awakening has always been the same. Like none of that has changed. It comes back to, to you know, yourself and taking ownership and, and taking responsibility. That has been the case since the beginning of time, I think, for, you know, for, for humanity waking up. So that's, that's never really changed, but I think it's just really bringing up to the surface how we tend to want to be saved. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think that, I mean, personally, I've been under some hectic attack as well um, uh, on social media, uh, especially, I mean, in other places, but we'll just keep it to social media right now. Um, and, you know, I like to think that in these very trying times, as, as someone who, who practices sacred alchemy, um, to understand that every, every negative is a positive waiting to be discovered or rediscovered, you know, and that's where the growth lies. So for me, it's, it was amazing how uh, two days ago, three incidents occurred in quick succession that really annoyed me. Um, it was amazing how the, for, for the time I was able to move through that annoyance without reacting. And like, like maybe two or three or four minutes later, then I wanted to react. But what, I, what was amazing then is that I'd actually get, given myself the space between my normal knee-jerk reaction to certain things and then to be able to give myself the space just to think about and feel before my knee-jerk reaction then came. So it gave me that moment of perspective. And, you know, and that's what we call, I mean, you know, when we talk about the Kriya Yoga, Kriya Yoga is the, is the three-step yoga to transformation. And, you know, the first step is really just if something really shitty happens, to be able to say in that moment, thank you. I don't know what this is about, but thank you. And just that realization of there's a greater gift through this experience is where the alchemy lies. So you don't have to know what the answer is in that moment or which direction to take. Because when you give yourself that moment of grace, so to speak, you're then able to redirect your energy and your thoughts and then move in a direction that is more constructive as opposed to destructive. And from there, you then create a better outcome. So it really is that moment of just checking in with yourself because I believe our enemies, or so to speak, are really, what did I, I think I posted something on Facebook today saying that your um, difficult people are really your spiritual teachers in drag. Yep. <laughs> and I want to tell you, that was so a note to self there, boy. <laughs> But it's wonderful to be able to see where am I reacting? What am I reacting to? Why am I responding in this way? Because every person and every situation is a mirror. It is a moment because you would not be attracting that person or that situation into your space because it is always us who creates our reality and attracts it. You would not be, a, you would not be attracting that situation into your life if there wasn't something to be learned. So the tougher the challenge or the more it grates on our nerves, like, ah, is it that, you know, nails to a chalkboard or sort of sandpaper to your nerves type feeling? 
it's that moment where we just got to stand still, silence our mind. And, you know, and this is where the yoga comes in mm -hmm. because our breath and our mind are intrinsically linked. So when we just decide to actually sit down and breathe, even though every cell in my body wants to run and attack or, or, or react or freeze up or fight or flight, you know, um, in that moment, just to be present with yourself and just to breathe and just to ask for clarity, and it comes, it really does. And that's exactly the thing. You know, we talk about being sovereign. That's what gives us our sovereignty is the ability to connect in these very, very um, challenging situations. I'm trying to think offhand the word in yoga, equanimity mm -hmm. as well, you know, where you're able to be, to be quiet in a, in a stormy place, so to speak. So you, you are that quiet place. It's like when the roots grow deep, there's no need to fear the wind. So you tune in you, you, to your support, your, 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 what you know to be true, what is giving you your solid foundation and a healthy tree always has a solid foundation. So it's about that beautiful space of just knowing I'm supported, knowing I have all the tools within me and to breathe. Because, you know, whether we, to breathe ourselves through it, because that opens up the pathways of where we need to follow or need to, to direct ourselves because whether we choose to, to acknowledge it or not, I think a lot of us sitting here doing these kinds of things, uh, talks, uh, podcasts um, at this time, yeah, we take a lot of flack. But at the end of the day, let us never forget we've chosen to be here mm -hmm. and we've chosen through our conversations to, to open pathways so that others who, who, who resonate with what we're saying will then also take a path, you know, and walk alongside. And in so doing, it's the momentum. But it is challenging in the beginning, very. We've got to have nerves of steel, I think. <laughs> I love that. When the roots are strong, the tree doesn't need to yeah. feel it for fear the wind. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. You blow off those leaves, but the, 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 the tree knows, hey, baby, I'm growing them leaves again. And <laughs> I've got them bloomers coming, and I'm bearing fruit soon. Ooh. <laughs> it has faith. Yeah. It has courage and faith, yeah. Totally. It's how we learn from nature. You know, when we look at nature, it's how we, we have so much to learn from nature and to see. We just look at nature. I mean, how did, you know, God created us with a thought. Oh seed so the seed starts with this teeny tiny little thing that in the right environment flourishes into this amazing tree or flower or whatever bush whatever you know and the more you give it what it needs the more it flourishes it's so fascinating so, because i think i'm the only one around this table who's not a yoga practitioner but everything you were saying there is exactly the same for anyone who's got a close connection say take with horses so um i spend a lot of my time with horses interesting the more time i spend with them now the less i choose to ride them and the more i choose to spend time walking out with them or doing things which is which is really interesting but it is that strong foundation and when you're with animals the power of your breath to tune into each other and calm down and they can pick up things so many things and you can instantly alter their energy by altering and your own energy by altering your own breath and about the power of nature you know, i work with something called zoopharmacognosy which is animal self-medicating uh, it's just what one of the areas i work with animals but it's so potent i think it's so key to what we're all experiencing in this time is is trusting those innate instincts within ourselves to know what's right and good for us as an individual at this time so when animals are self-medicating they're looking at what um salts plants herbs trees muds clays etc they're going to need what their body needs right here right now because one man's poison is another man's medicine depending when you need it and i think this is a sort of part of the journey we're all going through now is mm -hmm. every single person is an individual and at a different <coughs> stage so what i might need today might be different to what you need today bryce but it's that recognition 
and then going out and getting it for ourselves and sort of then then you move on to the next stage and you've gone through that level of healing onto your net so just really struck me when you were talking Shanti about I think well I don't know a lot about yoga I've done very basic yoga (laughs) but it's exactly the same as say when you're riding or working with a horse you know a lot of the principles that you were saying I think the principles of yoga Yeah, I see that in like people who are long distance runners. I mean, you can find the actual, because yoga is a science. I mean, Patanjali was a Mm -hmm. scientist and he wrote these sutras like what, 5,000 years ago? So it shows you how we as human beings have been struggling with this for a very long time. But, um, you know, the interesting thing about the breath and what my teacher in India tells us all the time, and it's so true, your breath is connected to your nervous system. And so when you hold your breath, that's something that you can, if you, if you're totally not if you're foreign to to actually being inside your body and and taking accountability that's something that's where you start that's where you end what is my breathing like Mm -hmm. and we Mm -hmm. in our yoga practice with the posture practice the asana that people think of when they see yoga that's just one side of it like in the form of yoga i do ashtanga which is very challenging they're challenging postures intentionally to trigger you intentionally in a very controlled environment so it's not dangerous with the right teacher and you are supposed to then be able to watch yourself within that very scary situation with the body like pulling your leg behind your head catching your legs in a back bend it brings up all sorts of of thoughts and within the people and you can feel that their breath is the first sign that something mm. is calm and so when we feel that happening, it's like, calm your breath down so that the, the, the nervous system can then respond properly yeah. to the situation at hand. And then, of course, you take that lesson and you apply it in your life because yoga isn't a sport. My teacher in India makes fun of us uh, because we put pictures of, of ourselves doing handstands on Instagram. And he's like, you've seen Cirque du Soleil. They do it better. Like, what are you doing? You're a yoga student. Don't put, don't do that. You know, like you're, this, this asana, pra- this posture practice is simply your tool. It's just your, it's just your tool. It's your, it's oh, your I tool. love this, Swabies. So I'm they're just the best. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, they do it better than you. What do you, get off of Instagram. Like, your handstand's not that great. It's just a tool for you. <laughs> they get paid to do their handstand. You don't, you know? So, so, you know, if you, if you look at it that way, when we, when we come into life, as Shanti was saying, anything that triggers us, you know, we're taught by the narrative of the day, don't be triggered, go to your safe space. No, triggers are valuable. That it's for because what triggers me won't trigger you. It's it's for you to understand <laughs> your own attachments, um, where you yeah. need to review yourself. And again, that starts with the breath, because the breath is the first thing physically, typically to, to respond to your mind being in a in a, in a projected form of distress. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. so what one of my uh, most favorite things I've ever heard about the breath. And by the way, Chantel, I wanted to say that all of my programs are called sacred alchemy. So that, that connection of alchemy, like I'm, I'm right there with you. But anyways, um, I know, isn't it? <laughs> the, uh, the, one of my, it is just like the, 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 the synchronicity of that. <laughs> Yeah. But the, one of my favorite yeah. things I've ever heard about uh, about the breath is uh, especially when we hold our breath, because, you know, that's what that's what we do. Sometimes when we get stressed out, we hold our breath. We hold our breath because we're wanting to stop time. Like if you think about it, sometimes if you see something that's about to fall so over there, but wow. you can't reach it, you can't catch it. What do you do? You go. <gasps> You're holding your so breath because true. you're not wanting that thing to fall. It's like you're wanting to wow. stop time. And, and, and there's a sweet connection with that, with the breath and wanting to stop time and resistance. Mm-hmm. You know, the, we hold our breaths or we alter our breath because we're resisting the present moment. We don't like what's going on in the present moment. Like the present moment is either too intense or there's too much crap going, there's too much shit going on, there's too much for us to handle, or we just simply don't like it. And so we hold our breath as, a, as like this metaphor, or not even a metaphor, it's like us literally trying to stop time. Uh, it's because like, we're resisting, we're resisting the moment, horrible. we're resisting the present yeah. moment. And like you want to hit the balls, but that's the way. 
Yeah. yeah, but but that's where so much of the the um, our problems with processing comes from mm-hmm. is instead of ju- just you know accepting things for what they are, you know, doing what we need to do perception wise to accept the way things the way they are. We want to control it. We want to control the situation. We want to control the narrative when there's, you know, sometimes you just can't, you can't control it. And the best thing that we can do is to let things fall into place and, and to, um, to not uh, resist or not try to negotiate. <laughs> A yeah. friend of mine are talking about that as well, how sometimes we try to negotiate the spirit or we try to, you know, negotiate with with um yeah with with the divine because we don't like (laughs) we're like well wait a minute no no, no, i know i said that i wanted this and to awaken but no don't make me do that next (laughs) life i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to do that make me do something else (laughs) and so we negotiate (laughs) and we resist and then we hold our breath (laughs) absolutely wow it's so true that i love the way you put that cindy just um That really, it's, it, it just kind of uh, clicked in for me as well, because I've never actually looked at it that way, you know, like when holding on and let's think about, and I mean, we're not just talking yoga, you know, on your mat, we're talking in real life. You know, if we look at what's happening now with this nonsense going on, let's, I won't say what it is, but we all know. And w- look at the, look at the, 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 the organ in the body that's most affected by this right now would be the lungs, right? The breath, which is linked to the heart chakra. So when we look at what creates the ailments and the illnesses in the body, it's always coming from an energetic perspective first um, or a block or a lack thereof, blocked up, lacked up, whatever. And if we think we've been living in a very, very narcissistic society for the last I don't know how many years. Everything is quick. It has to be there, you know, running, 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 running all the time. So we've shut off from the things that matter, nature, connecting with our kids, you know, connecting with family, making time to be creative. Creativity is so, so important in your everyday life. So important. Most people, they kick that out of their lives because I don't have time for that nonsense. Wow, it's like cutting off a limb, your lifeblood, you know, to 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 shut your creativity off or to not process that sort of thing, you know. So I mean I think it's this what's happened here and when we look at how that's affecting the bodies, it's really been mostly the lungs, heart chakra, shut down. So what is the body saying to us, you know? The body speaks. The body is always talking to us every second of every day, every moment. And when we stop to listen, it's always starting with a feeling. It's an energetic feeling, an intuition or a pain or a, a stubbing my toe. This is how our universe speaks to us, you know, and we just barge on mostly and ignore until eventually we have a car accident or something god forbid even worse you know but when we when we are not listening to the subtle signs from our higher source we are going to find ourselves in hot water and then and the same thing with illnesses and ailments you know any illness is generally a stress related thing and it's a blockage of energy flowing in that direction you know so, and that's when, when you go to the part of the body, what it means, what emotions are connected to that, that's where your key is. That's, that's where your answers lie. So when we start realizing these things, our body is our spaceship, if you will. It is yours to tune up and to tune in and to go in like an old grand piano that's been standing in the shed for gosh knows how long. It's, it's there, you've just got to tune it, oil it, it's there, and soon you're playing this magnificent orchestra within again, you know. It's ours for the taking, and when, we, and when we are willing to face the tough stuff in life, like we are now, I mean, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened 
I mean, just with myself in this past week, it's been crazy. I feel like I've been spinning. So much has gone on. One thing after the other. And it's all these things that are out of my control. Mm -hmm. So when I'm asked to be still and just feel, where do I feel out of control within? Because absolutely there have been moments. So I will therefore be attracting situations that make me feel out of control. And then it's up to me to sit with myself and my creator and process, open up there where the blockages are, breathe through it, practice through it, cry through it, mm -hmm. journal through it. Man, and then the alchemy occurs. It's that moment of just ping and everything opens up and you go, oh, yes, that's what it is. And it's that moment your energy expands, your vibration lifts that lead becomes gold, so to speak. And now you're using the very thing that held you back to recreate something very beautiful. So nothing can ever be created or destroyed, only ever transferred or transformed. So we've simply taken that pain and transformed it into power. And that we can only do when we sit with ourselves. And what we, what we give people here is we, we give them guidelines. You know, we guide people. This is what's available. That's what's available. What resonates with you? If it doesn't feel right with you, sit with yourself and see if it resonates. You know, don't watch what people say. You know, we all worship very differently. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are going to judge that, then you are immediately limiting yourself. You've got to look at people's actions. How do people, how do people present themselves? Not just presenting themselves. What do they do? You know? Uh, how do they create a better life for themselves and the world around them? You know, and there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, people out there at the moment doing amazing things. But yes, there's also a lot of shysters for sure. And that's why everyone has to, as you said, Bryce, you know, be discerning. And the only way you're going to do that is when you know thyself. So the only way you know thyself is when you sit with thyself. Yes. Right? Not 10,000 other excuses and voices and podcasts and this one says that and that one says that and now fighting with everyone because they've, gosh, you've lost, you've completely lost the plot then. Someone's been able to knock you off center very quickly. Mm -hmm. Take that, take that, take that. Sit with yourself. What resonates? How does it feel for you? How does it make you feel? Does your heart feel open or not? If not, why? Is it your sense of reservation or is it something, your intuition telling you something deeper? And then you've got to check and check again. And boom, then your answer comes. Yeah. My teacher in India also says a lot, and I say this at my class, I teach at Cindy's studio that, um, you know, yoga, yoga, so this is life as well, because yoga is just a union or a focus of energy. You know, that's all that it means. It can be, it can be implicated in a lot of different aspects of life, not just specifically the asana practice, but a lot of it is about being comfortable with being uncomfortable, with allowing yourself to be okay with being uncomfortable about something. And, and that I think a lot of us right now, with, if we look at the global situation, there's a lot of things we're all uncomfortable about because there's uncertainty. But on saying that, at least in my life, I can separate the global situation, which is partially out of my control. We all have to contribute vibrationally to it, but partially out of my control, I can separate that from my own life, my own private life. And I, I know Cindy, we were talking about this the other day. I'm happy in my private life. I mm. love my life. You know, I love, I have a great relationship. I have an awesome dog. I have my, I love my practice. I, I love our business. I love teaching at C Cindy Shaw on Sunday mornings, a bunch of badass women comes and some men and some men, you know, and I, I love doing my research and connecting with all you guys around the world. Like I love my day-to-day -day life. I know things are happening global, globally and things will eventually shift and change. They're bound to because it's, it's, we're moving into the age of Aquarius. And, you know, my boyfriend does a good thing saying too, and what people, especially if you're new, you know, if you've been told your whole life that astrology is demonic and all this stuff is bad and you're just now waking up to that, it's not, you have, the thing about astrology is that when a age shifts, it doesn't just shift. It takes a couple of years and that's a long Perfect. time for us as humans, but in the spirit world, that's not that long for everything to fall back into place.
And so what we're experiencing now is actually, from what I understand, is normal for a change of timeline, a change of, of eons, of ages, because the old system has to dissolve and to, in order to birth the new one. And so we're seeing this friction. And I know um, we talk about, my boyfriend talks about it a lot with our, our students, like friction. When you can create that friction, that's where change happens. Mm -hmm. That's the money shot Absolutely. right there. And so what we're seeing with this friction where everybody wants the friction to end, we just want every, trust me, we do too, but we have to accept that this friction is actually necessary for the earth, for the animals, for humanity, for everything in order to take this leap. And, and, and it's huge because 10 years ago, half of the people listening right now that know what's going on with this, the switching of the ages probably didn't even believe in astrology 10 years ago. So look how much has already been evolved. You know, I mean, Todd and I were talking about that. We were walking. I'll be careful about what I say. But, you know, five years ago, three years ago, so many people had so much trust in the uh, institution of medicine. And now in a short amount of time, how many people are more discerning now? Mm -hmm. So instead of being upset about all this negative stuff happening, look at the lessons it's taught us on a daily basis to take control, to go, wait a minute. I know you're the specialist, but I want to see the information too. I want to understand too. That's a beautiful thing. You know, it's a beautiful thing and be okay with being uncomfortable because there are things that are out of our control. There are things that, that we can't, you know, we can't go and say, okay, this is it. We're just going to close all the banks down and da da da. da. You know, we, we can't do that. We have to allow things to unroll at their natural progresses. Like you said, Shanti, like the tree is okay losing its leaves because it, it knows that in a few months time, new ones are going to bloom. We have to be that way and be like, okay, we have to let this thing die in its natural way. Yeah. It's exactly what I was going to say about the trees. It's like, there's a reason why you don't go straight from summer to winter that you go through autumn or fall first, mm -hmm. because there's important things that have to happen in that stage mm -hmm. to make you move into winter in a way that you're going to survive winter and come out stronger the next spring. And I think, you know, we're always in such a hurry because often as humans, we're so focused on the destination rather than the journey. And what would be the point? You know, if otherwise we might as well just be born and die, mightn't we? If we're not, you know, it's, it's we, you have to laugh at ourselves, really, because if it's not all about the journey, what is the point of life? And it's about discovery. I find it quite amusing how... You know, we, we think a lot of humans think we're the superior race on the world. And you just think, God, you've got to laugh at ourselves, really, about <laughs> how we overcomplicate things and how long it takes us to learn the lesson as a species. You know, of course, we're all individual on that journey. Um, but you don't see nature complicating things. Nature accepts it flows, it moves, it evolves, etc. And And I just think, God... I know our minds are so, so important, but I think the balance has gone so off. I heard it, it was really unusually. Now, this is bizarre. I, I don't listen to much sort of at the moment on the phone, but this morning someone sent me something. I was listening to it and it went on to a Candy Owens interview, just a short one afterwards. And it was absolutely brilliant what she was saying. She was saying, we've gone so off track. You know, we've laughed at some of what we've called these primitive people who've gone back to old fashioned ways of doing things where they grow their own food. They don't, you know, buy into the modern ways of living. And we sort of people in general society have looked at this backwards and she's like, oh, who's laughing now? They know how to grow their own food. They still use books. They're not reliant on the internet that we all know now the plug can be pulled at any minute on it. And it's so funny that things that we think as a, um, and I, I'm using we as a human species sort of thing that we think are moving us forward and making us so advanced. So actually so far away from our best interest. Mm -hmm. And I think the simple things in life, people are just really rejoicing in again. Mm -hmm. You know, like you were saying, Shanti, like your, your friends, your family spending time in nature, spending time with your children, you know, all the simple things that have been pushed to the side, your artistic side of things, your creative you, anything in nature has to be creative to survive 
And now we're starting to see the beauty. And when I heard Candy say, Owen say this, I was like, oh, hallelujah, this is so brilliant. We're going to start going back to what, what's really important to value. Well, and also in nature too, I heard I was watching a movement tea. I watch, Cindy knows this. I, I watch for my, my, I hate to say my real life because YouTube is also my real life. And a lot of YouTubers say in my <laughs> An off the internet life when I'm teaching, um, I, I like to watch movement teachers, not just yoga teachers to see their perspective on the body and how they, especially dancers, because they have a different perspective. And it's always, I think it feel like it makes you a better teacher, which you could kind of see it in a different way. Anyway, I was watching this dancer say that she said something that was interesting about flexibility. And of course she was talking about the body and, and in yoga, we focus more on mobility than flexibility, but she said, you know, the, the things that survive in nature are the ones that are flexible that allow, and I, I kind of like we talking about that transitional, but they allow, the, they just allow things to happen. That We allow the trees, the trees allow the leaves to fall off of them. How many people have had a, an animal? I hate to use the word pet, but I'll say that just, so you know, what we're talking about a family dog or cat, especially cats do this. They go off by themselves to pass away. Mm. They just know, and they accept it and they mm. go off and pass away, you know, and he, yeah. right, he, we don't want to be flexible. We just want to, oh, we want it now. We don't mm. want to bend and move. But that's how we survive. It's just to bend and move with, with, with where we're going. Nature Absolutely. is good at holding liminal spaces. So nature holds the space in between. And uh, uh, we have the capacity to do the same, to hold the space in between. But the space in between is also the most uncomfortable space. Nature, like uh, fall time to me, is considered a liminal season, like an in-between in season. And it's those it's those seasons that we have in our own lives when, um, you know, things are falling apart, but what's becoming hasn't become yet, or even who we're becoming, we haven't quite become that yet. We're that ooey gooey state, we're in that ooey gooey stage of the cocooning, mm -hmm. you know, not the caterpillar anymore, but the butterfly. But can you imagine what that creature in the cocoon looks like? It's probably hell? like all mushy. <laughs> and gross <laughs> and distorted and it's all like and that's what we feel like when we get in those liminal spaces we're like oh, you don't know what's going to happen <laughs> that's so true and the, those are the um the the challenging moments in our lives to hold but nature does it beautifully i mean it just moves through those in-between spaces without without losing without losing without losing a beat where we get into it and we, and we want to fight it, right? We want, we want to resist this. We want to always control. We want to always know what's coming. And I think that we can, you know, hold beautiful ideas for the future, but at the same time, we, we, our, 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 um, our growth comes from holding those spaces in between. We can't get there without those liminal, without those liminal spaces. Oh, yeah, I, I really, uh, it's uh, well, just what you were saying about the cocoon and the little whatever it is in the cocoon, you know, <laughs> we don't even know what to call it. It becomes a pupa or something. But what's very interesting as well is now when, so when it comes out of its little cocoon and it becomes the moth or the butterfly, we look at also the silkworms, you know, how the silkworms go through that process and then, it, you know, first the worm and then the the, the um, sorry, the egg and then the worm and it spins itself and then turns, uh, it closes itself up in the cocoon and then, well, when it's, when it's the moth again, bites through the cocoon. And it's very interesting because there's a, there's a story that goes about how someone thought uh, they saw the cocoon, the moth coming out of the cocoon and thought they would give the moth some help and cut the cocoon open. But what happened mm. is the little wings stayed this small. So it was never able to fly then. So it just dragged itself around on the ground without being able to fly because that process of getting out of the cocoon and it's flapping, 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 flapping its wings is where its wings become strong and grow. So through the process, what we see struggle, struggle, struggle is actually the wings growing so that it can fly. So I think, again, you know, we need to realize, all of us, that we're all going through the process of transformation or alchemy. You know, that really is alchemy. Um, 
and 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 transmuting from one stage to the next and that's always a challenging process any change is a challenge but when change comes knocking at your door it's always timely there's never a time that it's not timely which is really you know if you're in a bad relationship or a dead end job or a whatever the case might be and you have the opportunity of change you know most of us are so terrified to as rumi says you know why do you stay in your cage when the door is wide open you know you can walk out of that door at any moment it's your choice it's your choice to be there and i know that some people are obviously in some very very challenging situations and i don't want to undermine anyone who's in a challenging situation like that but after having worked with people for around about 20 years in this industry i do know there's always a solution mm. you know if you are willing uh, to if you are ready for that change and you want those wings to grow and you are ready to take flight your energy dictates that no one else and nothing else does it that feeling inside of you and we know what it is it's that feeling when you're ready to be ready to be ready to be ready and you just like a, a, a athlete you know on the starting block waiting for the gun to go off so he can run his race it's the same kind of feeling we have when you're ready for change so when that feeling occurs and you take yourself there through personal introspection through doing the stuff you need to do through sitting with yourself through the tough stuff through getting help if necessary you know um through doing whatever and most of all your faith is so important we have to know that whatever we going through right now is our contract with our creator or god or our source we've come here not by accident we've come here to grow through the experiences that challenge us otherwise we don't grow it's like again let's look at the moth coming out of the cocoon you know if someone's no i was just going to say and we can't forget what that we're the um we're the descendant of survivors mm-hmm. that we yeah. can do this because all of the people that have come before the before us i mean think of what our ancestors have survived i mean they they've truly they've survived plagues but like you know real plagues <laughs> they've survived <laughs> real ones yeah real ones. <laughs> <laughs> right they survived famine they've survived war they've survived gen- like especially like my ancestors they've survived the genocide mm. and the, so we are the descendant of survivors and that yeah. sometimes we forget what it's coded within our genetics it's in our blood and it's in our genetics to do hard things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because every all of the folks that came before us had to go through it. Man, I mean this earth this earth plane can be just come with all sorts of tumultuous experiences but you're built for it. You we we're, we're all we're built for it. And if we can remember exactly. that we are the descendants of the people who survived. Mhm. You yeah. can do this. Absolutely. I love that ca- ca- that cocooning um metaphor because you know my my boyfriend's had a lot of of very powerful teachers and to including Patabi Joyce probably the most famous one and he had a teacher uh in his early tw- 20s explain to him that he was in a phase of cocooning because that was right before he went to India and he didn't know that at the time but they picked up spiritually it was like he was his body was preparing to kind of go in a traje- trajectory into another direction and is not just his body but his mind is everything with him was going to go in this new direction of this new practice but i think i love that because i think of people watching if you're feeling anxious because it's it hasn't happened yet if you're feeling anxious we're in our cocoon right now humanity is in its cocoon right now and that takes time and thank god the people that are in charge of this whole thing understand that you know i i don't know if you if y'all caught janine on jc where somebody asked about um that mr american mr t was given an option to correct what happened in the competition we'll just say um and he he was advised by a wise old soul is what janine got in the cards not to do it yeah. to allow it to to play out and as frustrating as that is for us look at how much we've learned that wise old soul whoever that was that was 
helping him dictate what our pick the path he could have pulled it and could have completely overturned everything um and won won the gold we'll say um but he didn't he allowed everything to play itself out and i think that that was even though it's been hard for us it has allowed more people to understand and with that it's not just about the whole nasara it's not just about that it's like understanding that you have a right to understand that you have a right to go within yourself and say this isn't right and and then start to heal your own that it's so powerful and i think you know hopefully we, we still won't be sitting here in 10 years discussing this but um <laughs> i think i think in, at that point i think we're in the loony bit at that point but um, but um you know but in 10 years time when we look back at this time we'll probably be great i mean i think about that like i ram Doss, uh an, an, a teacher who's passed away but he would talk about that in his writing like when you turn around and look at your life and you look at these times in your life that were just hard and just yucky and gross when you were going through it. But usually those times are the times after you're through, through that process that you're the most grateful for because Absolutely. that friction was powerful. <clears throat> and we, and that, I think we're going to look back at this and be like, Oh my God, everything was necessary. We needed all this to happen, not just to get to the finish line, but for our own evolution. It's almost like not an evolution, but a, a a devolution we're almost going backwards to who we really were to begin with you know where the matrix within us is starting to dissolve as well you know and so i think i, I love that I, I i hope people like take that about their day like we're just cocooning right now it's not mm. finished what is that saying is my favorite sayings in the end everything is okay if it's not okay it's not the end mm. And when you're cocooning, just like you were saying, you know, you you can't go and cut someone's cocoon open for them. It's a worthwhile thing. Yeah, and 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 this thing, I mean, I just uh, my new word of the sort of year is it's fascinating. And it's just like I've never been at such a reflective stage of my life, and I feel very grateful to be able to do that because you know, you look there and you do take a sit back and you sort of look at things and how unfolding. And, you know, each day I'm learning more and more about how you just can't do it for someone. Now, we've all spoken about um, great teachers that we've had in our lives. And, you know, when the student's ready, the teachers will come. So teachers are really important to move us on through different stages in our lives. Um, I was having a really good conversation with someone this morning and we were sort of saying that there's a reason why you don't behave the same way at 40 as you did at 20. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a very good reason for that. Um, and I think Thank this God. is a thing. It's, you, can, you can have this conversation, you can do it, but as we've said, we cannot and should not make decisions for people and people have got mm. to look within themselves and do what they feel is right um we can't just keep blaming well so and so told me to do this and therefore i did it you know you might be able to do that when you're five a bit but <laughs> not even many five-year-olds really listen um but you know once you you're an adult in particular it's about what are you going to do for yourself at this time and then accept that and accept that if it goes well, great. If it doesn't go well, there was an important lesson that you had to learn through that process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, don't they say like the human brain isn't even fully formulated until you're about 27 years old? Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Yeah, like your brain doesn't get fully myelin myel myelinated, myelinated until about that age. And so we're making, <laughs> we go through stages of making all sorts of stupid decisions in, um, in our, our growing process. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we just, we just have to, we have to go through all those lessons on our own. And uh, to, like, even as a mother, you want to, cause I have a 16 year old and I want to tell him you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do this. But he's like, no, nah, I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> but you know, we want to, <laughs> we want to even like go in and 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 try to you know try to control and and try to save and 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 want to go in and and to try to to help people and try to change people. But in the end, it's always there. It's always their decisions and their path, and they have to go through it. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's interesting. I like what. 
carry on, Brett? No, no, you go ahead. No. Well, I was going to say, like, Juan O'Savin said once that, and I, I really loved what he said, that that we have to have, like, a, a near-death experience in order for our DNA to understand. And, and he kept warning us that this was going to be dragged out because we have to understand. We have to learn. We can't just be be told. And I know everybody, there's a difference between knowing something and like understanding, it, like knowing it, you know, it's like for memorizing something to regurgitate it or actually getting it. And we're yeah. seeing people even, even, I mean, I think Catherine, we've talked about this before, even though we consider ourselves to be like awake, whatever that means. Um, we've discovered certain things. We know there's still things we don't know. We know yeah. there's still shocks to come. And the more you get comfortable with, with, really in your DNA down into your psyche understanding, then the easier everything else will be because you'll be able to settle into that feeling of not just you're told something, you regurgitate it, you get paid, you go to the next, it's, 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 it becomes this like very, it's what we're going through in my opinion is a very sacred process. It's a, a very heart opening. Sacred. Yeah. Our hearts are starting to open and that's what's happening. You know, we've been too much in our heads. Mm -hmm. um, thought process and if we just look at let's let's look at the body again the head would really be would would let's say symbolize our iq mm -hmm. our intellectual intelligence okay as long as i can see it feel it hear it touch it bam it exists right and the heart sits down here and is is more the feminine so the head we can see is the masculine or the husband of the body mm -hmm. and the heart is the wife right so when the IQ and the EQ, because what really happens, I mean, our head acts as like the caring husband. He doesn't want the wife to, or the, or the, his lady to feel scared or upset. So would then send thoughts down often to suppress those emotions, right? If we look at that in, in, in sort of at 101, I like, to, I like to see things visually. So we can see that the husband doesn't want you to feel sadness, so he will distract with thoughts and things and let's do this and let's go there and, hey, let's go shopping or let's go and buy this or whatever the case might be. Distract, distract, distract all the time. So when we start, and that's when the, literally the heart, our hearts have been closed because we've been too busy in the mind, the monkey mind, as we call it. Mm -hmm. So now as we start opening up and we start feeling and we start feeling the power. Oh. Right when it was getting good. <laughs> there we go. It's to teach us this patience. I know. Wait, so, um, wait for it. Oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait for a second here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would say, and also when the male heart center opens, he starts experiencing some beautiful things and feelings and stuff that by design he's been taught to shut down from. So what we do is, and then we start experiencing this beautiful feeling of the IQ and the EQ start having, and le let's look at the chakra that sits between them, which is the throat, communication, right? So now, I mean, let's look at men and women. We have completely distorted views of each other generally, okay? And the, this planet carries the consciousness of us human beings, basically. So when our own thoughts, our IQ and our EQ have been in opposite sides of each other, that means the relationship with yourself is not in its integrity. So what do we do? We therefore then attract a partner or a situation that is not within its integrity. It's very easy to blame someone else for what's happening in your life. But then when we start taking responsibility, the question is, where have I been out of my own integrity that I had to attract someone who betrays me, lies to me, deceives me, is not in their integrity? Hello, mirror. Mm -hmm. It never lies, this mirror. A spiritual mirror never, ever lies. you just got to learn how to read it and look. And then when you start realizing that, you sit with yourself, then your heart opens, your mind calms down, and then you start having this beautiful relationship with yourself, with your yin and your yang, your IQ, your EQ, and then you start having the male-female connection with yourself. And when you have that, you're in harmony, and your relationships will reflect that too. And then suddenly you're attracting great partners into your life or great business experiences or whatever.
but it always starts with yourself. So I think this experience or this plan that's been going on, as much as what it can be crappy on so many levels, it has really called for us to open up our hearts, mm -hmm. to open up your heart to your neighbor, open up your heart to your child, open up your heart to your animals. Do you know how many happy kids and animals are out there right now? Because mommy and daddy are home. I want to tell you, this is so cool for the kids and the animals. Every person I speak to, and I mean, I have a lot of clients and stuff, and lots of stuff has happened. I mean, some couples have chosen to get divorced during this time, but it's there in their truth, you know. Families have pulled together. Kids are thriving, enjoying this homeschooling thing that they're having. Mom's at home, you know. Families love that. And we're reuniting as a family. And maybe it's time that we needed to do that because we know that our families have been highly targeted by the, the controllers um, of the planet. So they have targeted our kids and our families by separating us, um, creating this whole narrative of women working and empowering women and what have you. Um, but at the end of the day, what they've really been doing as well is pu pushing their education down our kids' throats and separating families because it's traumatizing for a child to be separated from its mother at such a young age and having all pairs or babysitters or nannies or whatever. So it's really taken us back. And I think, Catherine, you were saying that earlier on, you know, just going back to the roots of who we are, embracing everything that we need to and recalibrating, I think, is what what most of us are or I think we called to recalibrate at the stage whether we're going to or whether we're going to short fuse is up to us some of us are going to short fuse and really get upset and feel like the world is against us and this is the worst thing and blame the governments and blame yes we know there are responsible parties out there but you know no matter how much we're going to blame them it's not going to change things you know, they're going to, they, we know who these people are, that they, they're not, they don't feel and think the way we do. So we've got to stop trying to get them and to do that. And by hurling insults and swearing and what have you at them doesn't change anything. It just adds that negative part. So we really have to just look at how we within ourselves, A, can change within our family, within our community. And then start our own little project, start growing things, start growing our food, start planting gardens, start growing herbs, whatever. Start, you know, um, bartering, trading with each other. You know, who's got this? I've got that. That's what this is calling for. It really is calling for us to go back to our roots, which in Africa, the, the, the major tribes are all doing that anyway. So it's nothing really new for us here. And I'm a farm girl, so I'm used to eating Carrots out the garden were the best thing. Oh, my goodness, when those carrots got ready, I was the first one in that veggie patch, just hauling them out, mud and all, munch, 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 mouthful of sand. It was just the best thing. Those carrots out of the garden were my favorite. <laughs> so I love that, and I wish everyone could experience that because it's such a beautiful thing. You know, your immune system is stronger. We never, I mean, I lived on the farm. We never went to doctors, if, unless obviously, you know, obviously if we had the chicken pox and stuff like that, we all got our childhood issues, you know, that stuff. But um, my mom used to, used, to, used to nurse us, you know. If we, we lived on the farm two hours away from the closest doctor or hospital. So if you have this, so we were never pumped full of antibiotics and stuff like that, which I do think is also responsible for, our health and stuff, you know. The more natural we are, the stronger we are, also on a physical level. I think it's on, on so many levels that we need to. Well, it's really it's spiritual, emotional, mental, physical. That's what I always say, you know, the, the four legs of the table, the four elements, which is the fire, water, air, earth. So each leg has to have its equal balance. Otherwise, you wobble around. And you really have to give 25% of each of the elements, you know, to your, to your well-being. And unless you're doing that, you're going to be unbalanced and all sorts of things happen then. But you only can do it when you are in your peace. And then 
you know, God, God activates what needs to be activated inside of you. But you've got to get yourself to that point. You've got to get yourself to that place of peace and being receptive and being open and aware. And it doesn't happen to anyone who's pretending. This is coming from a real, real, real place. It's the, your keys and codes get unlocked within you as you evolve personally. And then you become a harbinger for more light for more frequencies, you know, and for more wisdom and for more knowledge. And that's what you get to share as you progress with your students, your friends, your family, whatever. You don't have to be standing up in front of an a auditorium of 3,000 people. Not at all. Yeah, it's within our community. yeah and you're, you're all those things already. They're already there. Yes, exactly. It's not like it doesn't exist inside of you. You know, another one of my favorite things uh, that, uh, is, is that you are actually a whole, you are a fractal. And the difference between like a fractal and a piece is, you know, a fractal is actually the whole. So you are a fractal of the universe. And so it's all, it's all already there. It's all there. Every Waiting single bit of it. Yeah. So, Waiting to be yeah. tapped into. Dialed into. Yeah, I'm special. I mean, that's how special, if you want to look at it that way, guys, that's how, because you are so powerful. That's why they've done all they've done to try to make you forget you were that powerful because you are that powerful. Exactly. It's like the story of Govinda Krishna, when he was eating dirt and his mother went to get it out of his mouth as a kid. And she saw the whole universe inside of him. Mm. It's us. Mm -hmm. It's all that's there. you. That's you. Yeah. And it's, it's just you. a remembrance. All the, the only the process of awakening is is just simply a remembrance. That's it. It's not like you were missing or parts of you. I mean, we might have fragmented yeah. ourselves, but even those little fragments of yourself are still in you. They just might have been buried. You know, your your yeah. body has been carrying those fragmented pieces buried within within the dark, uh, fertile places like the earth holds things like our body holds with nurturance all these fragmented pieces like things that we've pushed down but it's there it's not like it disappears or goes away everything is being being held in this very nurturing way within within your body within the memory of your cells within your blood it, it's all Absolutely. it's all there all we have to do is um uh, is is to remember and that's all you know that's all your your teachers or your animal friends animals and nature they're great at helping us to remember because they're not walking around forgetting no, they're they know. Their stuff. <laughs> i'm with the they're, and they're in remembrance all the time you know, know. <laughs> And with all the modern technology, you know, there's been so much talk about the 10 days of darkness and pulling the plug on the internet and everything like that. But, you know, we don't need that to connect with each other. So next time we can do this telepathically, ladies. <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> if Zoom goes oh, down for us, teleport. no worries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can send these messages. But it is, you know, it, it is in all seriousness. As, Joking with this, says someone because it's someone we couldn't get hold of yesterday, Jean Claude and I, and we were just, I was sort of saying it half in jest, but it's really important to to start using these skills now. You know, the animals don't need an app on their phone to know if there's a storm coming, and we actually know either. It's just we've we've forgotten to we've got out of the yeah. habit of using those senses, those part of our brains that we've closed down. You know, when I was a teenager and I used to work in a pub. I was, it was so long ago that we didn't have electronic tills. You did all the adding up in your head. And my mental maths was amazing because I used it every day. And if you don't use yeah. it, you lose it. So we've got all these abilities within us, whether it's telepathy, connections, knowing what to do, what, what the right food choices are, how to heal ourselves. I mean, my son, from the moment he was a toddler, he knew exactly which plants he could forage off and which he couldn't. It was quite incredible. Um, so I just think it's fun for us to sort of disconnect a bit and just reawaken those parts of ourselves that are going to be so important moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, and for each individual to, to step into their own superpower, however that looks like for them, you know? Yeah. And it would be just such a cool experience for us to interact that way, like really connected with your inner master, you know, yeah. your true intuitive heart and uh, your most magical, your most magical self. And we begin to interact that way. Yeah. The world would change it in, in an instant. In an instant. Like they keep telling us the best is yet to come. And it is. Mm -hmm. It really is. You know, this is an exciting journey we're all on and I'm looking to continue it. I so enjoyed that, ladies. I mean, really, it's just such a lovely time to have a different conversation and just talk about the different aspects. I feel, you know, really beautifully calm now after having these conversations with you and and pick those people. You know, if something's not listening to you or it's triggering you, then turn it off for goodness sake. Don't Don't talk to yourself through things that aren't resonating with you at this time because that might change the next day as your needs change yeah. mm -hmm. for sure you know that's that's the thing that I think what's hard too is like when people are getting so anxious right now because we can't we can't go anywhere it's not like we can leave our our countries our perspective and go to another country to escape it we're literally so it literally is something that's bigger than all of us it's all of us together, not us individually, but individually, we have the power to, to, to have our environment around us. And our, like I said, my day-to-day -day life is I have an amazing boyfriend. We can talk, talk about weird stuff all the time. It's great. I've got Cindy in my, my life too. You know, it's like pick, pick the people that are going to help you transform to your highest good, not the ones that are going to pull you back to where we once were, where you once were. You're not, you've already been there. Don't go back. You know, you're going it's painful to, yeah. to go back. Like once you energetically, once you calibrate, you know, talking about calibration, once you calibrate up to a certain level, it's really painful when you try to go backwards. I mean, yeah. you're going to, you're going to be met with all kinds of resistance because the powers that be, yeah. the higher powers that be, no. don't want you to go backwards. <laughs> so they'll make it, they'll make it really painful. I mean, physically sometimes painful to, to go backwards. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. oh so lovely ladies thank you so much i've really really enjoyed this i hope we can do it again there's so many fascinating things to discuss um you know i really hope everyone who's watching anyone that's watching that is trigger some thoughts about you and what you want to be doing for you yourselves as an individual and as cindy said you know what your superpowers are and if you're not quite sure have fun experimenting and finding out you know that's the joy and and that can change over time as well mm -hmm. it's not it's not meant to be static so just have fun in that process and and realize that you know sometimes these struggles are really what makes us so much stronger and also life so much more enjoyable as well mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Catherine, yeah. for having me on today. It's such a pleasure and an honor to chat with all of you beautiful ladies. So thank you. I know. I was so excited thank about you. this this morning when I woke up. I was like, oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have great connections, guys. Thank, thank you so you. much. And let's do yeah. it again soon, ladies. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much. It's been so wonderful connecting with you. And really, I'm just sitting here listening to all of you and as I said in the beginning, just marveling at the fact that we are so far away in physical miles, yet spiritually here we are. Mm -hmm. And thank God for technology as well, while we learn how to hone in with our superpower <laughs> skills <laughs> <laughs> and be able to be teleport and all conglomerate on what. <laughs> when this is over, we can just uh, teleport to each other and hang out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a and proper girl's night. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, so as I can bring my guinea pigs, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, have a lovely day, oh, ladies. You too. Wonderful. God bless you. you. Bye, -bye. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.